In 2015, we set ourselves five big, bold, ambitious goals. As we come to close out that five-year strategy and reflect on our 2019 performance, we've taken the time to review all of the challenges that we faced and share our reflections in the hope that it helps everyone else. The first reflection that I'd like to share is doing a few things really well. It's kind of become my mantra over the last five years. Um, five years ago, we had 31 charity partnerships and we moved away to just have one partnership for the five year period. What I have learned is that having that five year period allows you to have the headroom to be able to maneuver, to change path and, uh, and to refocus. So I would definitely do that again in a heartbeat. The second reflection that I'd like to share is around establishing your principles early on. We've always held the principles of human and digital at the heart of all of the work that we've done. And I think it's fair to say that whenever we lost our way, it's because we'd forgotten about those principles. So my learning is to always hold those close to the work that you're doing and use them as your consistency compass. I'd also like to add that partnerships have been absolutely critical to our success. Whether that's internal teams, external teams or agencies, or partnering with sister organisations or charities, we found that actually working in collaboration has absolutely been critical. So work on those relationships and absolutely have them at the heart of your strategy. And the final reflection that I'd like to share is perhaps more of a personal one. Um, budget definitely helps, but it's creativity that drives success. Having a strategic focus, a bold vision, having the right people in your team, and having a dash of creativity and innovation has definitely been the biggest ingredient for our success. The first learning from me uh, is don't be afraid to change tact. Over the five year lifetime of our partnership with Pan Disability Charity Scope, we've regularly and proactively assessed and reassessed the focus of our programmes and the impact that we have. And we haven't shied away from changing course when we think it's the right thing to do. For example, we've refocused our efforts from the direct provision of digital technology to disabled people onto disability employment in 2017 because we recognised our current programmes were not having the reach or the depth of impact that we wanted to have. My second point, or second learning, is make sure you focus on the impacts first and then the outcomes. To the social impact practitioner, quoting this principle of the theory of change model seems like an obvious point to make. However, I found it's all too easy for a team to forget the change they actually intend to bring about in society in favour of setting targets that look and sound good or sound impactful. My final reflection is specifically on partnerships, and that is don't underestimate the impact a well-established strategic partnership can have on your business. I think there remains this assumption that charities are the ones who stand to benefit from partnerships where corporates provide a financial contribution. And this assumption could not be more misguided. Uh, Virgin Media has made the most progress on disability inclusion over the last five years as a result of the education, access to expertise and motivation our partnership with Scope has provided. My first reflection is connecting strategy to individual responsibility and action is essential. Awareness of the climate crisis and wider environmental issues has grown rapidly in the last few years. But there's a lack of understanding of how to directly apply this in the business context for many people. I often find there's a detachment between people's individual views on environmental issues and their ability to apply this thinking to their own work when it's not seen as their direct remit. As we develop our next strategy and set goals for Virgin Media, we have to find a way to embolden individuals to take responsibility and apply their personal passion for the environment to change the way we do things for the better. My next learning is targets are a balancing act. Long-term targets are required to align to the science, particularly for climate change, but in fast-moving sectors like digital and telecoms, it's difficult for businesses to look too far ahead. This means long-term targets have to be accompanied by significant shorter-term milestones which you know you're on track and can recognise and celebrate progress along the way. Lastly, I'd say it's all about perseverance. Perseverance is key to driving progress in many areas of sustainability. A long-term view and targets can mean they're not treated with urgency particularly in fast moving sectors. When you know the end goal is right, you've got to stick with it. It's easy to say and harder to do. Identifying the indicators of change and celebrating the wins along the way provides that fuel to persevere. Our team has developed these reflections over the last five years, and I think it's fair to say in a lot of cases we've learned the hard way. But there's a lot to be said for acknowledging the challenges we've faced and what we know from five years of focused delivery that we will take forward to inform our next sustainability strategy. 
to summarise, I would definitely say keep it simple, keep your big, bold ambition in, in mind and definitely focus on doing a few things really, really well.